Hogwarts Castle, a 5-inch gauge locomotive, part 10, filling the balance weights on the wheels with lead, but first of all, a bit of shopping. And the first thing out of the box is a tin of matte black paint, followed by some more paintbrushes. I bought these via eBay, and they're very good. They're designed for painting your nails, but they're very good for lining. I also bought some sign writing brushes, but I think these are a bit too big for my requirements. Before I can make a video called How to Line Your Steam Engine Models, I need to figure out how to do it myself. I need to practice quite a lot more yet. I went to my usual paint supplier, Auto Paint Northern, and bought a couple of gallons of standard thinner. I'm going to use this cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner as you call it in the USA, to remove some of the paint from the wheels. I also bought some masking tape while I was there. Having a closer look at the brushes that I bought, you can see that these very long ones are more suited to larger painting jobs. These are really full-size brushes for sign writing. But these smaller brushes, used for painting pictures on your fingernails, are really good for me to use. But as I've just mentioned, I need to do a lot more practice with them. I want to remove the paint from the tender wheels, so in this clip I'm filling a polythene tub with some thinners. And I'm using a tip given to me by a viewer. The viewer said that the best way to pour the liquid out of a can of this shape is to pour it with the spout at the top. Thanks for that, it definitely works. And the first things into the tub are the four tender axle boxes. I'm being fairly careful not to get any of this thinners on my fingers and I'm being careful with it as I put the axle boxes in the liquid. Here comes the first of the wheels. I should be able to get two wheels in this, I think. I'm only putting the wheels in the tub in this position so that I can carry the entire tub full of thinners and wheels and bits and pieces into the outer part of the workshop, which is much better ventilated than in here. In fact, I'll temporarily add the third wheel, that way I can carry them all to the outer part of the workshop together. And this is how the wheels are going to sit for quite a long time in this tub of thinners, and eventually I'm hoping the paint's going to fall off. Yes, I know about paint stripper, it's much better than cellulose thinners, but it's very nasty stuff to use. In any case, this video is really about filling the balance weights with lead. Initially, I didn't think there was enough lead in the balance weights, so I'm going to add some more. But I'm not going to use molten lead, I don't want to disturb anything with a load of heat. This is a small piece of folded sheet lead, and I'm tapping it into position using a screwdriver. Then all I need to do is mix up some JB Weld. There is one minor problem with this job, I can only do one side at a time because as I put the JB Weld on top of the lead, I need to keep the position of the wheel as shown in the video currently. If the balance weight is not level, then the JB Weld won't be level. JB Weld is a two-pack epoxy resin mix, and even though it's quite viscous, it does settle before it sets. So I'm carefully filling the gaps between the plates, and this will permanently hold the lead in place. Before reaching for the JB Weld though, I tap the pieces of lead into position first, with a small screwdriver and a small piece of 3 16ths bar. But I do leave enough room at the top of the lead for some JB Weld. Like this in fact. Once I filled the balance weight, I used a cloth to wipe away the surplus. And bear in mind that the smoother you can get this job in its raw state, the less sanding it's going to need. I'm using a thin piece of mahogany to spread the JB Weld in place. And at first it looks really bad, but after you play with it for a while, it gets considerably better. Don't put too much on though. If you're working in a warm environment, the JB Weld will settle very well into position. So just to recap, you can only do one side at once, and as you leave the JB Weld to set, make sure the balance weight's at the bottom. I have a question for my viewers. I went to Black Gates Engineering and bought some stuff, and I thought I'd buy this. But why is it called an 8-inch flat bastard file? I really don't know. I have a couple of theories, one being that maybe someone has put an L in the word fat, but a better theory is this file was possibly made just outside a town called Wedlock. Anyway, that's enough of that. It's time to fit the handle. You must never use files the way that you buy them, with a very sharp tang sticking out of the end. As you can see, I'm tapping the handle into place using a soft hammer. Once I've done that, I drill a cross hole in the handle, and that way I can hang it on my file rack. And this file rack is just behind my Boxford lathe. That way all of the files are within arm's reach. And that's about it for this episode. I will just leave you to ponder 
on why this file is called what it is. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.